If I could pick just one thing that truly upsets me about all 2011 through 2014 Mustang GT premiums, it has to be this. The fact that not all of them come with a center screen to really spice up that interior. What is going on everyone? Welcome back to Derek Brand Productions for another video. Now I know the last time you tuned in and we talked about the Blucifer here, the car actually got stripped of all the lighting. So you can see the tail lights are gone. We come up to the front here, obviously bumpers off the car, headlights are gone, fog lights are gone. And that's because we shipped everything out to SW Lights to get completely built. Now I did intend for this car just to sit here until they got back and then you know, we were going to go reinstall everything. I actually have my new hood in for Cervini, so we were going to put that on as well. And ultimately, the car was just going to sit here while we focused on a blue tube valve out there that you probably can't see because of the lighting. But I went to visit my father today, and a package came in the mail, and I've been waiting for this package for about three to four weeks now. And it's finally here, so I figured since we're going to Florida tomorrow, I might as well bust out this video for you all and show all the 2010 through 2014 Mustang owners, the true potential of this Dynavin touchscreen application for our cars. I've seen a couple of people on YouTube actually install these on their vehicles, including my buddy Jacob Ardotti. I watched a little bit of his video today and I was very excited and that's exactly why I'm filming right now because I just want to get this inside the car. And as you saw from the intro clip, it's just kind of annoying that not all Mustang premiums come with a touchscreen. Some of them do, some of them don't. In my personal opinion, I definitely think that's one of Ford's weak spots is the interior. Now I know when it comes to these two cars, I'm about to compare, they don't really fall on the same level. But if you were to go to the dealership in 2014 and pick up a 2014 Stingray Corvette, all the interiors, even the base model, came with a touchscreen application. When it comes to the Ford Mustang, they typically had just two packages, one being the complete base, um, no ambient lighting, I think a downgrade in the sound system, there obviously is no touchscreen, and what's the last part? Um, cloth seats, that's what it was. Also, the gauge cluster, way different. And that's going to be the base model when it comes to the 2010 through 2014 Mustang GT. But if you were like me and you went out and wanted a premium for the extra bells and whistles, such as ambient lighting, um, a touchscreen, it was optional, I guess, in some cars, and we're gonna get to that. I know some premiums came with a reverse camera in the mirror, which is super cool. I know Jordan's does that. I think a better sound system and leather seats and what have you. So there's definitely a difference, but why didn't Ford fully include a touchscreen in all of their premium models? Well, your guess is just as good as mine, but today with our sponsored video from Dynavin, we are going to change that here on my 2013 Mustang GT. And before we go to the unboxing, let's go take a quick look at the interior in Blucifer here. So opening up the driver's door, you're going to notice that we do have a premium. There's our ambient lighting and, you know, I think you get like the lit up door sills here. Again, the cluster is a huge difference, but you might be able to tell I got some Recaros. Didn't come with a car. I got a flat bottom steering wheel. Didn't come with a car. Um, aftermarket shifter. Didn't come with a car, but you can clearly tell that I have this doo-doo little barely digital screen in there. Um, nobody likes it. Sync one. It's absolutely garbage, but other than that, you can tell that I do have a premium and it's kind of what it looks like right now. When it comes to an interior of the car, especially in today's day and age, Apple Play, like the Android Play, I don't know the correct terminology for it, but just ultimately having the perfect interior requires awesome seats, a pretty cool steering wheel. I personally love flat bottoms, just gives it a better vibe. And nonetheless, a touchscreen application in the car with some good speakers, that right there is like the perfect recipe for an awesome, awesome interior. Um, and not to mention tint, especially if you have the limo tint, kind of like I do, perfect feeling. It's the best. My 2013 GT Premium clearly didn't come with a screen. It's always something I've wanted, as I said. And today, it's finally happening with our friends over at Dynavin. We are going to go over here and unbox their product for the 2010 through 14 Mustangs. And all the reviews I've seen, all the videos I've seen on this product have been amazing, considering it is able to run Apple Play and the Android Play. 
So here I have my box from Dynavin, and we're gonna jump right on into it. And if everything doesn't look perfect, it's because I already kind of took a sneak peek. So we're gonna open this up. And here is their M7 platform from Dynavin. And this is specifically for 2010 through 2014 Mustangs. Obviously V6 GT. It doesn't matter. What does matter though is is gonna transform the doo, doo interior without the screen, and even if you have a factory navigation touchscreen in your car with this model, get this, trust me, because for one, sync sucks. It's terrible, you don't want that in your car. We're gonna have what looks like our instruction manual, and it even has an install video link at the top there. Pretty solid instructions on this paper. Um, I see a couple of QR codes saying scan me. So this is probably gonna take you right to the install video for this car specifically, so that's awesome. Step by step, I would assume I haven't done it. We're going to do it though, you best believe that. Looks like we have an owner's manual. Just kind of showing you everything. And we have a diver and some instructions. So it definitely comes with everything you need. Um, if you don't have access to the internet, I don't know how you'd be watching this, but perfect little instruction manual here with colors, with some graphics like circles and arrows and all sorts of stuff, so that's awesome. And then we have our wiring diagram right here that gives me an insane amount of anxieties, but we're just gonna set that aside. All right, it's time. Nice protecting foam, and here she is. Boom, ladies and gentlemen, there is our OEM style, OEM feel, OEM look with the matching gray that comes in the car from the factory. But we have the touchscreen, and my personal favorite thing about this system is yeah, of course, they have like the Tesla screens out there that you control your air off of touchscreen, you control your volume off a of touchscreen. Me personally, I like this setup because if I want to cool my car down, if I want to heat it up, a simple click of a button is all you need. I don't need all that extra touch screen in here and there, and I know all the newer cars out there do that. But again, me personally, enjoy just all the normal buttons, normal volume toggles and whatnot, and a touch screen. And the fact that this runs either Apple CarPlay or the Android Play is just the icing on the cake, and that's what I'm truly in it for. I think that's it. So that can go, and I would just imagine these are all the connections, the plug and play, yeah, it's exactly what it is. I don't believe there's any cutting and splicing, which is a definite plus when it comes to this kit. Um, it is plug and play. I'm gonna try to make this as simple, as visible as possible. The only thing is the steering wheel is kind of in the way. But as I go along with this process, I'll take the camera inside the car as well, just to give you guys a better look at everything. Um, first thing you wanna do though, this I do know is a fact. And just like that, you can kind of set this to the side. Once you have your center console pushed off to the side, and again, there's no bolts or anything to take this off, just simple clips like this, you just pull up, and it's gonna allow you to get to these two bolts. So I gotta see what size they are, but we're gonna pull these two bolts. That's gonna loosen this up a little bit. And from my knowledge, you just wanna get a little pry tool and just start prying nice and easily. Obviously don't go and scratch your dash up or anything like that, but um, you know, just work it out. And it's again, the same concept as this. It's just clips after these two bolts. Those two bolts down there are gonna take a seven millimeter and we're gonna go and just remove these. When you pull those two bolts out, I like to Grab it down here, put your thumbs on the dash, and just give it a little, little pull. And then you can kind of get your finger back there and just start taking it off. Just like that. You actually don't even need a tool. And now you can go, just take this little clip, and boom, the old piece of junk is off. When you get the main faceplate off, you're not quite done yet. You have to go back in, and there's another, I think, eight one two three four five six seven eight you have to pull those eight bolts as well same thing just pull that single clip and your digital display is now trash and last but not least this big old hunk of so you're gonna have to stick your hand back there it doesn't give you much room to work with and just kind of feel for the clips and once you pull all the clips this thing can now remove freely and you can set that aside along with the other pieces 
And now comes the part that I don't have figured out yet myself. I'm gonna take a quick minute, I'm gonna watch the video just to make sure I'm not skipping any steps, make sure I'm plugging everything correctly when it comes to the plug and play harnesses. I'm also gonna make sure I leave out the things that I know for a fact that I'm not gonna use just because I don't wanna get myself confused and I just don't want a big mess back there. Some of the things I know for a fact that I'm not gonna use and gonna discard with the wiring harnesses is gonna be a backup camera. I do not plan on mounting a backup camera onto the car. If you're like me, you just rely on your side mirrors way more than the camera. We're gonna ditch the camera connections. We are gonna ditch the satellite radio, like Sirius, Sirius, or whatever the hell it's called. There's some other things as well that I just know I'm not gonna use. So I'm gonna skip all that and get down to the main important pieces. So let me get over there, look at what I gotta do, and pick you guys up in just a minute. It's been about 30 minutes, and as you can see, we have the head unit here and a wired mess. So I don't plan on going into what exactly each wire does when plugged in. Like I said, there's a lot of things that I just abandoned. Um, for example, this little GPS thing. Um, I don't think it's necessary to run through the car because one, it's more wires. I'm gonna be using my phone, um, Apple Play. That's pretty much the only reason why I'm installing this. So I'm gonna be using Google Maps, Waze, Apple Maps, you know. So it's not really necessary. I also left out like an amplifier connection. I'm not gonna run subs or an amp in this. Um, just ditch it. I did indeed run the aftermarket mic. I have it stuck right here as you can see and I ran the wire through the dash in the back and it is plugged up in the back. You have to go underneath the dash and unplug the little micro USB that plugs into your original sink and then it gets bypassed by the Apple Play box right here. And then you have to run it around, it plugs into the link box in there and then I think you guys are getting the idea here. I think I'm all connected. It's a mess. It's not talked or wire managed yet. Um, but that's kind of pointless to do until we figure out if it works or not. So, I'm gonna set this up so the camera can see it. Take the screen protector off so you can see. We're gonna key on, go through the functions, see if everything works, and um, see if Apple Play works with the factory USB slot here in the little um, center console. So, fingers crossed, here we go. First things first. Screen protector is off. We're gonna grab our key. We're gonna hope for the best. So we just keyed on. Oh, there we go. DynaVin just popped up. I have my original Apple cord. Um, I highly recommend using a fast Apple cord. I don't know what the correct terminology is for it, but use one that comes with your phone. Okay, hold on. Hold on. Let's go and click, let's see, um, radio? Let me find a station. They kept us safe, kept their hopes up, and kept everyone going. Oh my god, this thing like, this thing amplifies the hell out of these speakers. Diamonds like this, Mother's Day extra look at that. We have a large selection of meaningful Dude, for that's everybody. insane. So that is making it so loud. Visit your local Hellsburg store. That, that is definitely Don't drawing more power. This year, Sunday, May 9th. Okay, fair warning. With this system, if you blast it on your stock speakers, you will blow them. We got sound, obviously, so let's go, let's try to turn on, like, our AC. Okay, we have power. AC kicked on. We got our little fan. Okay, that's working. What about, what about this button? Okay, those are working. Heat, does it change? It is changing down there. All right, one more time, let's go up here. All right, that's working. So now, on to the real test. Let's go ahead, take our phone, and we're gonna plug in our Apple cord. And again, this is going to the factory USB slot inside the center console. Phone's plugged in, nothing yet. Oh wait, our screen, connecting. Oh shoot, boys. Car play, baby. Ooh. <laughs> All right, so we're in my phone right now. This is so sick, man. We go beast mode playlist. Let's find something. Lemonade. Oh! <laughs> hey, 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 I can't play with so much, but um, we gotta wait for the beat to drop. Let's go, baby. We got freaking Apple playing in the car now. Oh, I'm stoked. I'm trying to think what else we could do. Um, I've never messed with Apple Play before. 
So we have my text messages, phone. Can you watch videos on this? No, you can't. There's no YouTube. How lit would that be, being able to watch that? If someone knows how to bypass that, let me know. If we can like watch videos as we, not, well, of course, not drive. But let me know. So we got a text message from Tyler Phillips. Let's see what happens. Read and make it. sure you give me a key food oh and a schedule. Oh my and god. Fun. Siri screaming at me. I think we're good, fam. I think we're good. Um, I am beyond excited. It's the little things like this that, again, transform your interior from zero to 100 real quick. And before I forget, you have to go and take off all the old clips, the little white ones right here, apply them to the new head unit. This way it can snap right in and then reapply our bolts, reapply the center console, cup holder, make sure everything's plugged in, tucked nice and neatly. And fam, I think this is gonna be a wrap. Went ahead and installed Dynavin's touchscreen system for 2010 through 2014 Mustang GTs. Let's go ahead and take a look at our new and improved interior. Truly the best part about this head unit is that it looks OEM, it matches perfect, and honestly it works even better than the Sync 1 OEM one, so I definitely recommend it. I absolutely love my interior now, and that piece with the Apple Play made my speakers sound better because I guess the output of power it puts out. It's just overall a wonderful system, super, super easy to install. Just take your time on the wiring, plugging everything up and whatnot, and you should be good. But man, what a freaking difference. Well, there you have it. Dynavin's touchscreen display installation on a 2013 Mustang GT. Thank you all so much for watching. Make sure you go copy your Dynavin touchscreen for your 2010 through 2014 Mustang GT ASAP. Link is in the description. I will not see you wrong, guys. The Apple Play alone with this beast of a unit is just so worth it. Thank you all so much for watching. We will catch you tomorrow, possibly with a rating my subscribers Mustangs. I know you guys have been asking for it, but I'm actually heading to Florida tomorrow, so busy, busy day. We'll see. But until next time, we'll see you later.